Wouldn't it be great if there was a programming language that is capable of creating entire websites and games while still being beginner friendly and easy to learn? Well, if that's what you're looking for, you came to the right place. Let me introduce you to Python. By the end of this tutorial, you will know enough about programming to fully start your programming career. So let's get started. Welcome to Learn Python in 2023 by Coding with Jan. This is the first part of a series. In today's video, you will get familiar with your IDE as well as installing Python. By the end of this video, you will have created your very first own rock, paper, scissors game in Python. Before we start coding, let's quickly have a look at what our program should look like by the end of this video. As you can see, at the beginning it says pick a username. Here we'll just say Jan. Next it greets us, saying hello Jan and welcome to rock, paper, scissors game. Here we can choose between rock, paper and scissors. In this case we'll pick rock. As you can see, the game turned out to be a tie and it asks us if we want to play again. Let's say no. And now it says goodbye and the code ends. If we had said yes, it would have just gone to another round. This is what you will have created by the end of this tutorial. Now let's begin. In order to install Python, you need to go to their website. It's called python.org slash downloads. Here you want to find this yellow button called download Python. At time of recording, the current version of Python is 3.11.1. This may vary though, depending on when you watch the video. Just hit this big yellow button and the download will start. Once downloaded, you need to execute the installer. Just click continue, 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 agree, continue, install and type in your password. Make sure when you're installing it on Windows to select the option at the bottom with add Python to path. If you don't click that option, the installation won't work properly. Once the installation is complete, you can close the installer and you'll find a window with a folder called Python and then the version of Python you have installed. If you want to double check if Python is installed, open your command prompt or terminal and type in Python dash dash version if you're on Windows or if you're on Mac OS type Python 3 dash dash version. As you can see here Python 3.11.1 is installed on my machine. If there's any problem you may need to restart your machine or download Python again. Next we need to install a editor for writing our code. This is where a so-called IDE integrated developing environment comes into place. My personal recommendation is PyCharm, which we will be using in today's tutorial. Just head to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm slash download and you'll find this, where you have two options, professional and community. For the today's tutorial, we'll be using the community edition because it's free and open source. Just click download here and then PyCharm will start downloading to your machine. PyCharm is kind of like Microsoft Word, but for editing code and not text. Once PyCharm has finished downloading, you need to open the installer. On Windows, this will be a installer and on macOS, it will be this view where you need to drag PyCharm CE to the applications folder. Once PyCharm is successfully installed, you need to launch it. PyCharm CE for Community Edition. Once open, you'll get to this view. Here, you just need to press New Project. Select the location where you want to create the project at. In my case, this is Desktop. And make sure that Base Interpreter is set to the current version of Python. In my case, this is Python 3.11. And then press Create at the bottom right. After a few seconds, you should be greeted with this screen. This is where we'll be writing our code. I'll split this video into four parts. Computer output, user input and variables, computer opponent or second user, and looping the game. Let's start with step one, computer output. First things first, I want you to delete everything you see here. We won't be needing this. Right, now we have a empty canvas to work with. If you remember, the first thing our program contained was the welcome message. Welcome to rock, paper, scissors. Now let's start with that. In order to get output in Python, all you need to do is write print. Here it gives us a suggestion what we may want to write. This is actually correct. We want the print function, so we press tab. And then it auto-completed two brackets. Everything we now write in those brackets will be printed in the command line. What we need to do is add a apostrophe like this. PyCharm will now autocomplete a second apostrophe. And now inside of those apostrophes, we need to write hello username and welcome to rock, paper, scissors. Username will be replaced later with the actual username. And now if you go ahead and click on the top right where there's this green arrow, 
and you press it, as you can see, it just says hello username and welcome to rock, paper, scissors. Pro tip, add comments above each section of code where necessary to keep the code organized. These comments should be simple but also explain what the code below does. In this case, it will be welcome message. Now I want you to add these four messages and find fitting comments for each where necessary. Next, user input and variables. All right, let's start with user input. In order to capture user input, use a function called input. It works similar to the print function. You type input username and it will return username. As you can see, it says username here and if we click behind it, we can actually start typing. Now, I want you to add the following input functions in places where they make the most sense in combination with the right comments. Now, as you can see, I moved the input for username below the print username function. I added a input rock, paper, scissors for the user input. And I added a input new game for if you want to play again. As you can see, once we execute the file, it says username Jan, rock, paper, scissors, rock. And then it says you win, you lose, or it's a tie. New game, yes, no, let's say yes. And nothing happens right now because we haven't given it functionality yet. All right, so next up are the variables. Variables are used to temporarily store data in your computer's memory, like the username or the user's move. Variables in Python are very simple. All you need to do is write the variable's name in combination with a equal sign in front of whatever you want to set as the variable. Here in the case of the username, all we would need to do is write username equals input username. It's as simple as that. Now I would like you to do the same for the user move and the user game inputs. All right, so next up, we're going to add the computer opponent. For the computer opponent, we need a way for the computer to choose between rock, paper, and scissors. Native Python doesn't have a feature like this though. So what we need to do is import a so-called package. Packages contain pre-written code that we can use. All we have to do is import this package by writing import random. Random is the name of the package we will be using. Next, we need to declare what options the computer has. For this, we need a so-called array. Our array should be stored in a variable called options. Our array should be located above the user input. The position doesn't really matter, but I like to keep things clean and simple. After the array is created and stored in a variable, we can move over to creating our computer opponent. For that, we need to create a variable called computer move. It will be located underneath user move. So the variable computer move contains random.choice options. Random is the name of the package, as you can see at the top here. Choice is kind of self explanatory. And then options are the options we are giving it to choose from. Now to the winning conditions. Here we have only seven options same versus same, rock versus paper, paper versus rock, rock versus scissors, scissors versus rock paper versus scissors or scissors versus paper. Now we get to use if statements. If statements do exactly what their name suggests. If something you declare happens, a certain piece of code will run. Let me demonstrate with an example. In this example, we can see if the user move is the same as the computer move, it's a tie. In Python, if you want to use a if statement where something should match something, use two equal signs. Now you may think that is a little bit odd, but I can explain. One equal sign is already used for declaring variables. There's also elif and else. Elif is short for else if. Else if means that if the first statement doesn't work, it will try the else if. There's also else, which will be used for if everything else above doesn't match. Now this is an example for if you choose rock and the computer move chooses scissors. As you can see, it will say you win. Now what I want you to do is use this pattern for the rest of the winning conditions. And this is what you'll end up with. All right, and at last we want a else statement. 
As you can see, if you type in something else than rock, paper, scissors, it will tell you that it's a invalid input. Once all if statements are written, you can delete the three print functions written at the beginning as those were just for orientation. Now we have made the game functional and you can already play it, but we have still not completed everything. What is yet not working is the play again question. If you try your game, you'll see that nothing is happening. The code will just stop without playing again. And that is because we haven't given the new game variable any functionality yet. To loop our game, we first need to put everything inside of a so-called function. To define the function, we need to first put our core game mechanics inside a def, which is short for define. Next, we need to select all the code below and press tab to shift it to the right. Then we need to create an if statement for the new game. And then at the very bottom on the very left we need to write game with two brackets. You might be asking yourself why we are doing this. Everything inside of the function will only be run if we tell the program to run the function. We do that in the last line here. And then once the program is run once, it will get to the play again question. Here we tell it that if the answer is Y, it should run again. And if the answer is anything else but Y, it will say goodbye and exit the program, as you can see here. And let's run it one last time. Now you have already learned so much about Python. You now know output, input, packages, if statements and functions. You have even developed your very first game in Python. I recommend that you delete the code and rewrite it for the best learning effect. If anything is unclear, just let me know in the comments below. You can now click here to jump to the next part in the tutorial.